Hi there, welcome to this edition of the Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm Kevin McCormick. Today we're going to give you updates on all the Lake Orion sports, including soccer, volleyball, football, and a lot more coming up next. Lake Orion's soccer team picked up a crucial 2-1 win over the Birmingham Seahome Maples in OAA white action Tuesday night. Lake Orion scored right out of the gate when Kyle Watson headed in a corner kick just 36 seconds into the match. The Dragons would go on to keep the lead in the first half and early part of the second half. Lake Orion extended its lead shortly after halftime when Connor Sturgis created a turnover 20 yards from the Seahome goal and then slotted the ball into one against the goalkeeper to make it a 2-0 lead with 36-18 to play. Seahome scored late as the Maples put the score at 2-1 when Alex Kerstetter set up a fantastic shot with 16-55 to play. The Dragons then played an away game against the West Bloomfield Lakers. Lake Orion won the game with a score of 1-0. The single goal of the game was due to a penalty shot in Lake Orion's favor. On Tuesday, September 29th, the Lake Orion girls swim team hosted a triple meet against Rochester and Oxford high schools. The meet started off with one meter diving. Oxford's Jenna Zetter won first place with a score of 181.45. Lake Orion's Colleen Campbell took third with a score of 173.85, and Abigail Slater was in fourth place with a 166.10 score. The next event was the 200-yard medley relay. The Dragons took first with a time of 1 minute, 56.24 seconds. Claire Abbasi, Amanda Keller, Sarah Hennings, and Kristen Abbasi were on the relay team. Event three was the 200-yard freestyle. Rochester's Brittany Kim had the best time with 2 minutes, 3.66 seconds. Following her was Lake Orion's Emily Diner with 2 minutes, 5.28 seconds, and Katharina Zersny with 2 minutes, 6.15. Next up was the girls' 200 IM. The Dragons did well in this event and took both first and second place. Clara Bossi was first with 2 minutes, 11.46 seconds, and Sarah Hennings was second with 2 minutes, 21.66 seconds. The fourth event was the 50-yard freestyle. Dragon Kristen Abbasi took first with a time of 25.62 seconds and Zoe Quinn placed second with 25.71 seconds. In the 100-yard butterfly, Lake Orient's Kristen Abbasi won first place with a time of 1 minute 3.74 seconds. The Dragons also placed second when Katharina Zersny finished with 1 minute 6.84 seconds. The next event was the 100-yard freestyle. Rochester's Brittany Kim finished first with a final time of 57.98 seconds. She was followed by Lake Orion's Zoe Quinn with a time of 58.11 seconds, and, the, and Eliana Ritt had 58.57 seconds. In the 500-yard freestyle, Lake Orion's Sarah Hennings took first place with a 5-minute 28.24 second, and Emily Diner was second with 5 minutes 41.79 seconds. Next up was the 200-yard freestyle relay. Lake Orion's team featuring Kristen Abbasi, Zoe Quinn, Ileana Ritt, and Sarah Hennings finished first with 1 minute 45.94 seconds. Rochester's team made up of Brittany Kim, Victoria Thor, Catherine French, and Jordan Kendall took second with a final time of 1 minute 48.95 seconds. In the 100-yard backstroke, Dragons' Clara Abbasi finished first with 1 minute 0.35 seconds. Rochester took both second and third place. Victoria Thor with 1 minute 8.06 seconds and Rashda Sulvala with 1 minute 10.65 seconds. The teams then competed in the 100-yard breaststroke. Lewan Kim for Rochester finished in first place with a final time of 1 minute 17 seconds. Lake Orient's Hannah Quinn was second with a final time of 1 minute 18.51 seconds. The meet ended with the 400-yard freestyle. Lake Orient Zoe Quinn, Eliana Ritt, Katharina Zersny, and Claire Abbasi competed, completed the relay first in 3 minutes, 48.99 seconds. 
Rochester came in next with 3 minutes 55.99 seconds. And the final team results for Lake Orion versus Rochester was Lake Orion 114 and Rochester 69. ON TV filmed this swim meet in its entirety. Check out our program guide on orionontv.org for future airtimes. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube page to watch it all on demand. The middle school cross country season is well underway and the Young Dragon Runners are dominating. Walden, Oakview, and Scripps Middle Schools all took part in the Old School Invitational held at Walcott Farms in Ray, Michigan on Saturday, September 26. This race is very popular for its challenging course, which requires runners to cross the Clinton River not once, but twice. A dry week led to a faster than usual course for 2015. The girls' seventh and eighth grade division top 10 was full of dragons. Sophie Novak from Scripps blistered the field, taking first place, breaking the 13 minute mark at 12 minute 49 seconds. Walden's Abby Locke finished fifth overall, with Oakview's Emily Leopold finishing in seventh place. The boys' division, some strong runs as well, with Oakview's Andrew Nolan and Adam Tisch finishing in third and sixth place overall. The races continued for the middle school runners as they traveled to the Hanson Invitational in Sterling Heights on Saturday, October 3rd. They were also joined by the Lake Orion High School girls cross country team as well. The varsity runners were in the top form taking overall team runner-up trophy just behind the first place Clarkston. The Lake Orion runners were led by Belina Gasky and Emily Fluent who finished seventh and eighth overall. Allison Sherman and Rachel Zeal finished in 10th and 11th place overall. The cool conditions mean some fast times were turned in by all of the top 10 runners. In fact, it was the fastest field in history with a new course record set by Caradina Duffy of Lance Cruz Norris at 17 minutes 50 seconds. The Dragon Middle School runners put in another fine performance again, dominating the top 10 podium. Scripps, Walden, and Oakview owned the top five, placing first, third, fourth, and fifth overall. The future of the Ladies Dragons cross country program looks bright indeed. The varsity boys and girls teams competed in the second OAA Red Jamboree on Tuesday, September 29th. Both teams performed well with some top times beginning to fall at just the right time. The Dragon boys took top honors by a wide margin over Rochester Adams. Top performers on the night were Andrew Laurent taking first overall with a 5K time of 15 minutes, 51 seconds. Laurent is one of the top runners at all of Oakland County. Matthew and Jacob Renz brought home fifth and seventh place finishes with Jack Everett and Jacob Ernat finishing 11th and 12th overall. On the women's side, Lake Orion High School finished third overall behind Clarkson and State Power Birmingham Seaholm. The Lady Dragons placed well with Belina Gasky and freshman Allison Sherman finishing 7th and 8th overall. Emily Fluent and Rachel Zile placed 12th and 18th. The Oakland County Championship meet for middle school and high school runners was held on Friday, October 9th and Saturday, October 10th. This meet is always a good gauge to see how teams match up at the midway point of the season. With 23 middle school teams taking part, this is one of the largest middle school races in the entire state. The Lake Orion Middle Schoolers really showed their stuff on the challenging Kensington Metro Park two-mile course. The girls' seventh and eighth grade varsity runners turned in some of their best times of the season, with three earning the medal podium. Scripps Middle School took seventh grader Sophie Novak brought home the county crown, finishing first overall with a time of 12 minutes, 24 seconds. Abby Locke of Walden Middle School placed 13th overall with a time of 13 minutes, 15 seconds. Emily Leopold from Oakview finished 23rd overall at 13 minutes, 24 seconds. The boys' 7th and 8th grade varsity race was very fast indeed. Oakview's Andrew Nolan finished 2nd overall at 11 minutes, 34 seconds. Oakview's Adam Tisch took 11th overall in a time of 12 minutes, 15 seconds. Congratulations to all of the medal winners. The high school 5K meet saw some of the top teams in all of Michigan going head-to-head -head for team and individual bragging rights. The girls' varsity dragon squad placed fourth overall in the team standings behind, with 198 behind defending state champion Seaholm, Milford, and Waterford Mott. Top finishers for the Lady Dragons were Belina Gasking in 20th, Emily Fluent in 31st, Allison Sherman and Rachel Zeal in 40th and 41st. 
The Lady Dragons are showing signs of a strong team coming together at the right time. The varsity boys also showed well at county, coming in fifth overall. In the team standings with 190 points, Lake Orion's top runner, senior Andrew Laurent, pulled out of the race midway due to an illness. This cut into the Dragons' chances of taking the county crown. The team finished strong, though, with brothers Jacob and Matthew Arenz taking 15th and 19th overall. With regionals just a couple of weeks away, both Dragon squads look to make that final push to the state finals held at the MIS Speedway in Brooklyn, Michigan. ONTV will keep you updated as those results come in. The Dragons varsity volleyball team continue to have a very successful volleyball season so far. On September 29th, Lake Orion faced their league opponent, the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. The Dragons won the away conference match by a score of 3-0. The first set was very close with a score of 25-23. As the match continued, the gap between the scores continued to grow with the second set being 25-18 and the third set being 25-14. The Dragons volleyball team would then host a very important game against the Clarkson Wolves on October 1st. Lake Orion has been looking to defeat their league rival for the last eight years as Clarkston strive to win their ninth consecutive league title. The Dragons were able to complete their mission and took the match with a score of 3-0. The home team had an impressive entrance state starting off the first set with a 4-0 lead. The Wolves fought back but were unable to take the set from Lake Orion, ending the first set with a score of 25-21. The second set began similarly to the first with the Dragon lead of 5-0. Clarkson would not let the Dragons have that last word and took the lead halfway through the set 13-10. The teams then tied the score at 17 before Lake Orion took the set 25-17. The third set would prove to be much more challenging as the two teams fought for the set. The Wolves pressed hard and delayed the Dragon match point 24-23. The Lady Dragons made one final push and took the match 26 to 24. On October 3rd, the Dragons traveled to Mount Morris for a non-league tournament. Lake Orion faced five separate teams during the neutral tournament. Their first match was against the Heritage Hawks, where they won with a score of two to zero. The Dragons had similar results when facing the Mason Bulldogs, also winning two to zero. Lake Orion's streak was broken when they played the Mount Morris Panthers, who won the match two to one. Lake Orient's next opponent were the Holt Rams. The Dragons bounced back from their loss and took the match 2-1. Lake Orient ended the tournament with a 2-0 win against the Canton Chiefs. The Oxford Wildcats hosted the next game Lake Orient would play on October 6. The Dragons defeated their league opponent 3-0 during the conference match. Lake Orient took the first two sets by a substantial mar margin, winning 25-12 and then 25-11. Oxford fought hard in the third set, but were unable to get the win, losing the set 25-21. On Thursday, October 8th, Lake Orion played an away match against the Birmingham Seahome Maples. Unfortunately for the Lady Dragons, they lost the match 3-2, creating a three-way tie for the top of the OAA Red Division. Lake Orion won the first set 25-22 and continued to play hard during the second set. However, in a turn of events, Seahome took the set, took set two 25-22. The Maples also took the third set, 25-21. Lake Orion pushed hard for the fourth set and won 25-21, tying the match at 2-2. It all came down to the fifth set. The Maples wore down the Dragons and won the last set, 15-12. Now, here are the current standings for the Volleyball OAA Red Division. On Friday, October 2nd, the Lake Orion football team hosted the first annual Pink Out game against Stony Creek. The event sponsored a Mother's Wish, a local charity to help Oakland County mothers and families with the day-to-day the day, day -day burden that comes with fighting breast cancer. The Dragons wore special pink jerseys featuring the name of a cancer survivor or a lost loved one. The players were not the only ones in pink. They were joined by the coaching staff, the marching band, and spectators. There was also a ceremony after the game in which the players gave their jersey to a survivor or a family member. Pink balloons were also released into the air in their honor. Unfortunately, Lake Orion would not fare so well during the game. The Stony Creek Cougars won the game 21-14. In the first quarter, Stony Creek gained a two touchdown lead over Lake Orion. Dragon junior wide receiver Michael Jarvis made a touchdown in the second quarter from the 36 yard line. It wasn't until the fourth quarter that the Dragons were able to tie the game when running back Chris Wilson scored on a nine yard run.
Stony Creek was able to make an 80-yard drive for the game-winning touchdown later in the quarter. As a warm-up to the big homecoming game, Lake Orion High School seniors took on the juniors in the annual Powder Puff football game on October 8th. The two teams had been practicing for less than a week in preparation for the annual event. While warming up before the game, both the seniors and the juniors had an excited energy about them. On the first play of the game, junior Paige Goodman ran the ball from the 39-yard line all the way to the senior end zone for a 51-yard touchdown. Minutes later, the seniors tied the game when Hannah Stenzel was handled, handed the ball and ran for the touchdown. The teams continued to battle against each other, but the game remained tied until the third quarter. With five minutes remaining in the third, junior number 82, Madeline Zalik, took the handoff at 31 yards for a touchdown. The junior class wasn't done scoring just yet. With a little over two minutes left in the fourth, Junior Gwyneth Broodbeck rushed past the senior defense for another touchdown, making the score 21-7. The seniors rallied together and fought back when number 36, Samantha Vila Zumaya, scored an 80-yard touchdown with a minute 36 left. Unfortunately for the senior class, it would not be enough. Juniors won the 2015 Powder Puff game with a score of 21-13. It was a beautiful night for football on Friday, October 9th, as the Dragons hosted the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks for the homecoming game. The Blackhawks headed into the game with only one win on the season. The Dragons hadn't fared much better with a record of two and four. After the Blackhawks' first drive resulted in a punt, the Dragons began their first drive on their own 22-yard line. The Dragons administered a heavy dose of running back Keith Fields as they marched down the field with less than five minutes left in the first quarter. Quarterback Caden Preachcorn hits number 28, Lawan Bronner, for a 15-yard touchdown to give the Dragons an early lead. The extra point was good, Lake Orion 7, Bloomfield Hills 0. In the second quarter, the Blackhawks are on their own 14 when quarterback Eli Sherman laterals to wide receiver Mike Almany. The ball sails over his head where it's scooped up by Alex Mell and taken into the end zone for the touchdown. The extra point bounced off the left upright, doink, and the Dragons had 13, the Blackhawks nothing with 11 minutes left in the quarter. Later in the second, facing a second and goal, Danny White goes eight yards for his fourth touchdown of the season. The Dragons decided to go for the two-point conversion. Priesthorn hits Michael Jarvis in the end zone to make the score 21-0 Lake Orient. At halftime, the crowd was introduced to the homecoming court. Last year's king and queen, Grant Johnson and Cheyenne Sloan, returned to Dragon Stadium to crown the 2015 king and queen. Johnson placed a crown on the head of Dominic Fosman and crowned 2015 homecoming queen was Destiny Roper. How does it feel, guys, to be the newly crowned homecoming king and queen? It's really exciting. I'm, like, really happy. Yeah, it's, 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 it was unexpected, kind of, so yeah. it's, like, a lot more fun and exciting. There wasn't much action in the second half of the game, however, with Lake Orion adding only a field goal to make the final score 24-0. I caught up with Chris, Coach Chris Bell after the game. It was, it was great to see guys get opportunities. You know, Lawan Bronner, you know, made a heck of an impact that first half, caught some nice balls, did a great job on the crossing route, and scored a touchdown. So awesome to see him do that. Um, you know, Keith ran the ball real well in the first half. Chris Wilson came in and gave us a different change up there in the second half. Defensively, you know, did a great job keeping them off the board. You know, they, they're a little challenged in some areas, but they got some really good athletes that we knew we had to stop. And Dan does a great job mixing up formations and shifts and sending everything under the sun at you. So uh, defense played really well. Special teams, you know, I thought we were pretty solid. Uh, so it, it's progress. So it, it's much a much needed win, a win on homecoming, all that, all that great stuff. But uh, you know, we're fighting for our lives, and it's a step forward as we get ready for next week. With the win, the Dragons' record improves to three and four, with the team traveling to Clarkson to take on the Wolves. Thank you for watching this episode of Lake Orient Sports Update. I'm Kevin McCormick, and we'll see you next time.